speed and agility. Speed and agility, and as you know, that's not something IT is known for today. Oops. What has worked in the past isn't going to work in the future, as IT must now be able to support two operating environments. Traditional applications that are designed to support and automate existing business processes, such as collaboration, data processing and analytics, supply chain, and web infrastructure. A new breed of applications and services which drive revenue and new customer experiences by leveraging mobility, big data, and cloud native technologies. IT is being stretched in traditional environments to lower operating costs while at the same time being stretched in the new application environment to increase operational velocity. The key challenge that we're hearing loud and clear from your customers as well as our customers are facing the bridging, going from traditional to the new style of business. They require the ability to do both. IT must be flexible to meet application needs instantly. Oops, did I lose control again? <laughs> nope, you should be good. It's not moving. Oops, okay, here. Um, in the digital transformation, many of you may be um, well aware or have already seen our four transformation areas that HPE has. Um, we're going to focus on transform, which is the top left, um, to a hybrid infrastructure, mainly focusing today on private cloud. Um, I did want to show you what the opportunity is in the next three years in these four transformation areas, which, which transform to a hybrid infrastructure is the largest opportunity at $565 billion in the next three years. Okay, the industry has evolved to hybrid IT. So those of you who are supporting these types of industries, what this slide is showing you is that most of them are already initiated a hybrid IT um, strategy starting with private cloud. And that's going to be really the way to go with regard to um, traditional hybrid IT. So I just wanted to let you look through this to see what, if any of these industries you're supporting today and the adoption of private cloud, which is in green, um, and public cloud, which is in orange. So public cloud is also in that particular, those industries as well, but not to the degree of where private cloud has initiated that transformation. Today's biggest opportunity is private cloud, as I had mentioned. The market opportunity for private cloud transformation is expected to grow to $25 billion by the year 2015. So $25 billion in private cloud alone by the year 20, um, 2018, sorry. 56% of this opportunity is expected to flow through you, the channel. Customers need help with this strategy. Forrester has put out, uh, two years in a row actually, has put out that HPE leads the pack for private cloud. Um, we've rated the highest in eight out of 15 of the categories, and that is a worldwide um, um, research that they have done. So that is basically what I wanted to um, show you. And what you're going to hear about today when we get to that portion of the webinar is Cloud System 9, which is HPE's private cloud that is out there today. But first, I wanted to step um, into what we are um, actually labeling as the right mix. HPE validated with 455 Research, that's a research company, that every organization has its right mix. You're probably sitting down with your customers and they're not sure where their journey begins for um, uh, hybrid IT or cloud in general. We want to help you define the right mix your customer's right mix, power your customer's right mix, and optimize your customer's right mix. So the way um, each enterprise must define their right mix by hybrid infrastructure based on their needs. The right mix of infrastructure varies by industry, company size, type of services, and many other factors. Defining the right mix can help increase efficiency and reduce cost. Public clouds will play a role in most organization transformation to hybrid infrastructure. Public clouds are sometimes suitable for short-term dev test needs or for cloud-native applications that do not require storing sensitive data or ensuring compliance. Your hybrid infrastructure should have a single management tool set 
that allows you to manage different types of infrastructure. Policy-based placement ensures workloads are deployed to the right infrastructure based on the needs of the workload. Hybrid infrastructure allows you to move traditional applications to the cloud and allows you to develop and deploy cloud-native applications. What does the right control do for your enterprise? The right control um, allows you to control data locally to deliver low latency, uh, low, ultra low latency, support security governance and compliance requirements, regulate those workloads and user access in a multi-cloud environment, maintain, that, maintain oversight and agility through internal service provider catalog, provide on-demand provisioning of applications and workloads, administer and optimize your resources across a hybrid infrastructure to minimize your cost utilization for both internal and external services. And of course, the most important is the right partner. We know you are the trusted partners to help with your customer's transformation to a hybrid infrastructure, and HPE can help you. The path to hybrid IT, I just wanted to reiterate just a couple little things before Derek starts is that uh, most organizations are existing IT or traditional IT supporting their existing business operations. With a hybrid infrastructure, organizations need to add new infrastructure and consume new cloud capabilities through their existing IT to enable new cloud capabilities. So just for a level set on definitions before we get to Derek, is a hybrid infrastructure includes automation and virtualization, greatly improving operating efficiency and reducing costs. Automation technologies allow organizations to shift administrators away from day-to-day -day common tasks to value-creating tasks. Private clouds are a key element of hybrid infrastructure, delivering services through a self-service catalog. Private clouds are ideal for services that have specific security, compliance, or performance requirements that cannot be met by a public cloud. And public clouds are a key part of a hybrid infrastructure as well. Public clouds are ideal for workloads that have large variations in demand that don't involve the use of proprietary information, customer information, or data that requires security or privacy policy. So what I would like to do now is to introduce you to, um, these are some of our America's um, Helion customers that we have. There are over 3,000 Helion cloud system customers worldwide. Um, this is a short list of some of those. And right now we want to talk about positioning a solution. The solution we're going to talk about is our HPE Helion um, cloud system 9.0, which has been recently launched. Derek Wright is one of our stellar cloud architects and he is going to take you through positioning a solution. So Derek? Is Derek on? Did we lose him? Hello? There we go. Hello? We can can you hear me? Now. Oh, okay, great. On, I, I was muted. Okay. <laughs> so uh, good afternoon, everyone. Again, thank you guys for uh, taking the time out to listen to our, our, our Helion uh, uh, cloud strategy, and uh, what I like to do is kind of take you through uh, the what, right? So, you know, I like to say that Lynn, Lynn took you through the why, and I want to take you through the what. What is Helion? So, as we move forward, click the gain control. I'm trying to move forward. There we go. You know, we always like to start our discussion by saying and, right, because, you know, we, we feel that we're all inclusive. Uh, we, we recognize that there are tons of solutions out there and products out there uh, that are in, in your customers' data centers that need to be managed, they need to be uh, cloudified, if you will. So, you know, if you, you think about using the word and, uh, you know, that also puts you in the mindset that, hey, you know, you know, HP can probably do this, right? So if I want to add some sort of exoteric piece of hardware or some sort of esoteric piece of software, I can certainly bring that into my environment, put it under the guise of uh, what we'll talk about as cloud system, and have that managed in our in our private and hybrid cloud areas. 
So as we, look, as we look at what Helion is, Helion is not a specific product. What Helion is is our brand, right? It's, it's our enterprise cloud brand. And under that uh, brand, we have a portfolio of products and services. So if you heard out there and you say, hey, you know, what's the product number or that SKU for Helion? There is no specific SKU. It's really a, a group of products that we've put together under the Helion brand uh, to go out and, and, and go to market uh, for spe you know, specific use cases with our customers. So <clears throat> why, you know, why Helion? Uh, so, you know, we, we're providing choice, no vendor uh, lock-in, and that's from a both of hardware and software perspective. Uh, you know, we don't force our customers to, you know, uh, you know, have to run HP hardware. Uh, obviously, we would like you to, uh, and we would like them to, uh, but we can certainly uh, support and manage um, OEM hardware, be it Lenovo, be it Dell, be it uh, Supermicro or, or UCS. Uh, we can put those under the guise of, of our, our hardware management uh, and also p push services out uh, to those other vendors. Uh, we, we also will leverage the current infrastructure. We're not saying, hey, you have to go out and purchase net new hardware. Uh, and now if you have a requirement and you have a need for additional hardware, we can provide it to you in an appliance um, uh, format. Uh, hybrid solutioning, right? So we do also understand if you looked at the, uh, the chart that Lynn showed earlier, uh, you know, there's a you know number of, of market segments that are looking at public cloud to some degree, but no one's at that 100% threshold. Uh, so, you know, the hybrid solution is important uh, that we, you know, we have the capability to you know, manage services both from a private perspective and also public. And again, easy to, easy to use marketplace portal. Everyone already knows how to use the portal, right? If you go out and you go on eBay or if you go on out to Macy's.com and you have a shopping cart, you know how to order services. And again, we are we are we are a trusted uh, global support and services and support. We know how to service this, we know how to support it, and we know how to go to market of it. And most importantly, and and uh, you know, and I, if I look at a lot of these as we shift to the new style of IT, and you'll hear that term from us quite often is focuses uh, the focus on developers. Traditionally, we have not focused on our developers. And as you look at the, you know, what's going on in, in many customers, you know, the lead in to these cloud services are not coming from IT, not coming from the operations group. However, they're coming from developers, right? Uh, those are the guys that are saying, hey, I'm going to pull this op open source product. I'm going to use this. I'm going to use that. Uh, I'm going to go and use my credit card because I need to stand up uh, uh, some VMs quickly and shut them down. Uh, you know, we need to work with those developers to get them, right? And that leads into our experience. We've done this. If you look at that Forrester chart, uh, we, we, we've been recognized as being a, a leader uh, in this market space. So in the portfolio, if you take a look at uh, the left and the right side, and if you go, you know, if you move from left to right, you know, it's a journey, right? So if you look at the left side of the, in the beginning here, we're talking about traditional IT, and that's what we're all accustomed to, right? Uh, you know, you kind of look at, hey, I've got my operations team. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm relatively siloed. I have a networking team. I have a storage team. I have a server team. And then layer over top of that, you've got line of businesses with applications, right? And what we're looking to do is start to bring forward all of these teams together, right, automate them, automate the processes, right? They're virtualized, a lot of them, maybe not 100%, and there might be use cases where you still need to go bare metal, right? And we do support that. But again, you, you want to get into that automation space, right? I hand off a VM, now what, right? Um, you know, then you go into private cloud. So if you move over to the right, they, we've got managed cloud. If the customer doesn't necessarily want to do it themselves, you can manage it, we can manage it. And then all the way to the right, you've got the global public clouds, right? You've got your your Azure, you've got your AWS, Rackspace, and, and and so on and so forth. That gets us over to hybrid infrastructure. You want to be able to put that all under one management, right? And if I can put it under one management, I can do some some analytic, uh, analytics. I can see what my use my usage is versus you know public cloud versus private cloud. You know, am I running on X storage versus 
public cloud storage, where am I bene where am I gaining the benefits, right? And a lot of times you'll see that you may you know you'll be shocked to see what the results are. It could be hey now I'm saving you know X amount of dollars just by running it in the house for this application, but for application B it may make more sense to run it out in public space. But you're getting good analytics because everything is behind the common management infrastructure. So when you when you look at over the uh, build on premise, uh, you know, pardon me, uh, HP has uh, put together our own uh, Helian OpenStack uh, uh, OpenStack distribution. Um, so if you guys are familiar with OpenStack, or if you're not, that's an open source uh, 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 infrastructure as a service project. Uh, we have branded our own. Uh, you know, we, we're provided. We're very close to uh, Stack. Uh, we, you know, we're adding, you know, we're hardening around security and, and deployment of it, you know, and then again, the most important thing is we're providing uh, support and services and indemnification, right, uh, for all of, the co of our clients that use it. And then again, as you move into the new style of IT, you're developing a lot of your own apps. The customers are moving into, uh, you know, this cloud native development uh, platform, and we have a Helium development platform and another product called Staccato that we recently acquired. Uh, that is based on Cloud Foundry, another open source project, again, but is really focused around that developer and helping them. And we call, you know, that's a pass platform. <clears throat> and we're really focused on helping them get up to speed so they're not setting up databases, they're not setting up messaging systems, you know, RabbitMQ or, or WebSphere or what have you. What they want to do is have all of that stood up and have the capabilities they want to start coding rapidly. And then also uh, we've got Helium Eucalyptus, which is another acquisition uh, around last, um, we acquired last year. And that's really for those customers that have bought into uh, the AWS API platform. Their applications are written to it. Uh, you know, they're really ingrained in that space, but then they may realize that, hey, the cost is, is high, relatively high, or, hey, I want to develop in-house first and then I want to push that out to AWS and bring it in uh, accordingly. So uh, Eucalyptus is the only platform, private platform, uh, out there that conforms to, you know, I say 80%, 80 to 85% uh, of the most common used APIs from, from Amazon. So what does that mean? I go out and I write, write an application. That application conforms to AWS, you know, each EC2, S3, or what have you, uh, load balancing services. I can move those uh, in between my private, public and private space, whereas today you can't do that. Um, and again, Helian uh, Cloud System uh, 9, is, which is our flagship, it basically encompasses all of these components and what most of our customers are looking at, right, it includes uh, Helium OpenStack, and it includes uh, well, our registration engine, um, which has been around for a very long time, but we'll talk a little bit more about those. And on the right side, from a consume and off-premise perspective, uh, we also have a uh, multi-tenant virtual private cloud, managed private clouds, and then our, our, again, of course, um, you know, our, our network, the Helium network, where we have, you know, third-party uh, uh, providers providing services to uh, the cloud. So typical use cases for hybrid IT, uh, deploying the traditional apps to the cloud. So I'm running SQL Server, and I, you know, that's a traditional three-tier application out there. Uh, I want to move that out to the cloud because, you know what, we need, we need to stand it up. We want to see if we can recognize some cost savings. We want to do some automation. Not a problem. Uh, rapid, rapid infrastructure provision. Again, this is one of the, the main reasons that people move to the cloud early on is, hey, I need to get infrastructure up and running quickly. Uh, and we can do that re whether it's um, on a public uh, cloud or uh, on, in your own data center on the private cloud. Um, brokering and managing multiple clouds. Uh, you know, now as we, as the cloud space matures, uh, what you'll see is customers looking at multiple uh, cloud solution, and also with the uh, masterization of of um, containers, uh, you'll look at you know Mesos and you'll look at Docker. You know, 
they may be looking at multiple clouds to deploy their applications to recognize cost savings at any point in time. Hey, you know, we've got some uh, free credits of Azure. Uh, you know, we've done a deal with AWS. You know, how do I broker that? Hey, I, I, I have some infrastructure internally. You know, brokering between those, figuring out what's the right fit. Uh, and then again, developing and deploying cloud native applications, right? Um, and managing and, and, and operating complex cloud. Again, so the important piece here is looking at the use cases for hybrid IT, figuring out where they fit and how you can solution those. So when you look at the uh, the journey, as we talk about, you hear a lot about the journey. You know, we're looking here, building your hybrid infrastructure, uh, extending hybrid value, and accelerating hybrid, uh, your hybrid cloud re results. All of these line up to different places where, you know, where an, uh, the end user customer sits uh, with journey. So, you know, some may just want uh, good infrastructure, right? They want to deploy out to Azure, they want to the AWS, they want to deploy into private uh, existing hardware or net new hardware. Um, and they want to move traditional clouds uh, uh, apps to the cloud, right? So that's building your, your, your building that infrastructure, really just focusing on that infrastructure. And then as you move over to the middle space here, extend value, things, look at that storage in that cloud, right? Uh, you know, where do I store, you know, store my, sto my storage? You might want to use Swift in an object storage space and brokering between the clouds. And then as you're looking at accelerating, now my applications are written, uh, uh, you know, you, utilizing, you know, uh, Staccato or utilizing DP based on Cloud Foundry, developing those applications gate to really take advantage. So, so now when you hear those, you know, those nebulous words of bursting into the clouds, there's a lot of work that has to go on behind, behind that, uh, you know, to get your applications to understand, you know, where to where place to be and where to, when to spin up, when to spin down. It's not just as simple as, hey, I'm going to put out, uh, a, a VM out there, uh, at, you know, some, on, on, out on some system and run it, right? There's a lot of work that needs to go on behind that, and that's what these tools will do for you. <clears throat> Hold on one second. Can you guys see? Uh, okay. So, so when you look at uh, private cloud, you hear a lot of private clouds, and the way we define it is you're looking at private clouds from a traditional workload, what we're looking to do today. But on top of that, I want to automate, I want to orchestrate, and also I want to provide self-service. So instead of always going out to that operations team and have them stand it up, I can go to a web page, request the service <clears throat> myself, and, and uh, that service will go ahead and run uh, and stand up. And then when you look on the, on the right side, becoming a full-fledged service broker of IT services, right? Now, you, you del you're delivering services both internally and externally, and it's portable, right? So these are some of the, the buzzwords when you're out there, you're speaking to, speaking to the customers and your end users, you're understanding what their use cases are and what, you know, what they really need based upon uh, you know, what they're saying. So, yeah, I like to kind of go through uh, a, a workflow or process of of, of uh, what goes on in the cloud space. And as you guys know, you know, it's not as simple, and I'll say it again, uh, as just standing up a VM or in some networking, right? There's a lot of things, a lot of processes that go on behind that. So if I want to stand up a service, I want to make sure that I go through all of my IT processes but they're all automated, right? So again, we focus on uh, openness, on the hybrid amount, uh, 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 environment, making sure it's secure and agility, right? Being able to to move as as my business moves. So again, first thing I want to look at is my self service portal. I want to give either my developers, my end users, the line of business folks, the capability to go out and request a service through, via self service portal. Okay. And once I do that, right, those IT administrators and users go out, request that service. It's an orchestration process, right? I have to I have to combine their requests with my my resources that I have either on or off prem. Uh, we have a product called or Operations Orchestration. It's been around for I guess around you know ten plus years. 
that has between five to six thousand workflows, and those workflows are not just HP products uh, and, 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 and and tools, uh, but again, it could be an IBM, uh, it could be uh, uh, you know uh, you know the, the the hardware EMC storage, what have you. We can go ahead and orchestrate that. So now I'm pushing out that request, figuring out what hardware or software I need and how to talk to it, and then pushing out to that, continue my process. And you have business analytics, right? So I want to provide you show back and charge back, right? What services are being used, who's using them, and how long are they using them, regardless of where they are. And then I want to run analytics on top of that to understand what the impact is to my bottom line. And again, IT service management, right? When you, Whenever you, someone requests a service, whether it's via cloud or via traditional ops, there's a pro those are processes, right? IT service processes, right? Change management. There might need be some approvals, right? I want to automate all of that. Service management uh, 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 by uh, CMDB, right? Configuration management database. Uh, service now. I may have service now in my environment, so I could have the capability to link into all of those uh, IT processes. And then on the right side, I've got business service management, right? I need to manage those VMs, right? Uh, I need to know what the performance are, of them are. What am I, you know, how much CPU, how much memory they're using. So then I have my providers. Now this is where, you know, from if you come from an infrastructure background, this is what you know, right? I my original background is from an, you know, from infrastructure, and this is what I know, right? You know, it's my hypervisors, right? You know, if I'm in a uh, a large organization. Uh, or even a small organization that's looking to save some dollars, you might have a, a VMware ELA, and the next year that ELA is up, you might want to take a look at KVM or or, or Hyper-V, right? You might want to start looking at uh, taking advantage of containers, right? So, you know, can I save money? And if I can save money, I might want to move to this technology. Now, if you deploy this cloud solution, do you have the capability to support that? And again, you know, the future technology, and you certainly do. Uh, uh, public cloud, Amazon, we spoke about that at, uh, at length. On-premise AWS, that was our eucalyptus product, right? Uh, that sits behind us as well. So, again, I might want to push something out to AWS today. I might I might want to push, you know, and keep it there. I might have another set of applications that I might want to push out uh, to Azure. Uh, and I, I just want to make sure, uh, Lynn, can you guys see this build? I just want to make sure everything's going uh, uh, going well. Uh, and then you have OpenStack, right? So OpenStack will also sit... Uh, on, uh, behind this solution as well. So I can have standalone OpenStack. If I'm just totally running OpenStack, that's it, that's all. I can run that without issue. Or if I want to put it in uh, under the contents of my broader cloud with CS9, uh, that's it. that certainly sits down as well, sits there as well. Uh, platform as a service. Again, am I developing applications? How am I developing those applications? You know, and, you know, there's a term called polyglot, what language, right, many languages, uh, be it .NET, Java, Java uh, Perl, you name it. Again, config and infrastructure automation, right, service, server, uh, service, server automation, which is an HP product. Uh, you may have customer, or you guys might be running Chef or Puppet, uh, Ansible, SaltStack. These are... Uh, configuration automation tools that are out there that that a customer may already uh, have in place. So we don't want them to get rid of the, the, the process, you know, whether it's scripts they've written, uh, you know, if they have a process to do a certain task, all we want to do is put that behind our management solution so we can automate that task, right, and move down and, and continue and, and, and be able to provide those services rapidly. Again, and then there's, uh, your infrastructure. So, you know, there's a big push from us from, from one view. So if you're running a, a G7, G8, G9 based server, you put one view and one view also uh, sits, uh, sits between the orchestration space and manages the infrastructure, your physical infrastructure uh, of, of your hardware and then turns it over to, uh, you know, your big process, the IT process and the application with OO and, and CSA. Uh, you know, and that goes for you. If you look here, you've got uh, three par and in our recently announced project system and, and, and our converged systems. Now, again, one thing that does not, you know, we also include or does not, we don't preclude uh, any of our uh, competitors, right? So, and as I said earlier, 
if you're running, uh, you know, Lenovo, if you're running uh, 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 the UCS, you know, uh, EMC, Dell, you can bring these under, hopefully, as you're moving on over to uh, HP Solutions, right? Again, we have uh, Alliance Partners. Uh, there's a host of partners that are out there that are developing applications and solutions, cloud-based solutions, you know, backup as a service for as one that can also fit into this environment, uh, again, to bring your backups off-prem relatively easily. Okay, and again, to wrap all of this around, you know, we'll work with you and the customer from a services perspective. So again, big the big point here is a choice, as we talked about with AND, flexibility, and, uh, and no vendor lock-in, right? We want to make sure that we're open, and that's what the true promise of a cloud is. So what I'll do briefly, I'll go through some of the individual products. Uh, I did talk a little bit about, about it on that uh, block diagram, but you know, this is a cloud system enterprise. Again, the flagship product. It's all inclusive of our uh, primarily most of our solutions. Um, Self-service portal, uh, OpenStack. Uh, we can have compute uh, running on VMware, Hyper-V, uh, KVM. Uh, it also has a development platform uh, embedded in it as well. So again, very um, very easy to use, easy to stand up uh, solution to get a customer uh, a cloud rapidly. Uh, so cloud system comes in two form formats. Uh, I would say most. Uh, customers look at the full-fledged uh, cloud system enterprise, and, and that's primarily because they're going to be running existing apps and what we call traditional apps. Uh, cloud system foundation is strictly uh, a, 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 a uh, open stack solution. So again, if they're looking at developing applications, then cloud system foundation uh, is the way that they want to go. Now we're looking at uh, as you look at it from a hardware perspective and bringing in your infrastructure, the most important piece is a unified API. And with one view, we're providing a unified API across servers, uh, storage, and network. But again, as I, I want to don't want to harp on, I, I want to harp on this. Uh, we also support third-party, be it you know Cisco networking, you know, with our network automation products. Again, we can bring all of those tools together, and again, manage them uh, in a very efficient and rapid way. So you've got a, a choice of how you acquire a uh, cloud system. So you can have a, a factory integrated pre-built system. Again, that's full-fledged um, you know, hardware and software. Uh, we've got reference architecture so that you can build it together with perhaps existing. And, you know, we have our converged systems. Uh, and if you already have a uh, an infrastructure, you can actually purchase it uh, based on just pay to purchase the software itself. Again based upon choice, flexibility, and, and timely value. Which solution is, is the right choice? So so who do we compete with in this space? Uh, obviously, you know, VMware with Be Realize, uh, Microsoft uh, with uh, Azure Pax, uh, you know, Cisco, and, uh, and IBM. Again, we, we compete in these spaces, um, but at the same time, uh, we work with a lot of these. We've just announced a, a partnership with Azure. Uh, you know, we could run our solution on VMware, or we could run it on KVM or the other uh, any other hypervisors, right? So, you know, when you look at what our com competitors are doing, they're really more siloed, right? VMware wants to have you run pretty much everything on VMware. We want to give you the op opportunity to say, hey, I may down the road if I'm a VMware shop today. I may want to move to Microsoft. I may want to move to a, a full-fledged KVM solution, right? With some of these other solutions, you, you don't have that. Uh, AWS, 
uh, a compatible a compatible private cloud again migrating existing AWS workloads to and fro right? uh, I can I can push it out to AWS or I can bring it back uh, back in now I can run it in house to save some save some money again the big thing is AWS um, compatibility uh, you know and Eucalyptus has been around for a while uh, and again you know we really uh, work well in that environment Double chart there. Uh, OpenStack. So, what are we doing in the OpenStack space? We, uh, we are, you know, one of the leaders at the website. If you guys have an opportunity to take a look, called StackAlytics.com. That goes and tells you at any point in time uh, what what vendor uh, is leading in the development. And at any point in time, HP is either one or two. Uh, and also, that's based upon a life cycle where we are uh, with regard to um, uh, what OpenStack is. Um, release we're at. So again, we, what we're providing, uh, a lifecycle management capability, we're, we're really making OpenStack uh, available for the enterprise. So if I go ahead and download OpenStack from uh, from Trunk, guess what? There is no real insta installation process. There's no, no easy uh, to use uh, upgrade process. Uh, so you're pretty much, and there's really no support outside of the community. So if you're looking to just run your business, but you want to run your business on OpenStack, you know, you don't want to spend all of your time, you know, coding and, and, and coding OpenStack. What you want to do is run OpenStack and put your applications out there and make money. All right, so as I said earlier, design integrations, uh, indemnification, and again, we're a leading uh, contributor to code and technology. Oh, so who do we compete with in the OpenStack space? Uh, obviously, it's Red with OpenShift. Again, it's important to note that with OpenShift, it's not OpenShift is a, a PaaS platform similar to uh, Staccato or, or uh, HTTP, but the big thing to note is we're based upon Cloud Foundry, which really is the industry standard, whereas Red Hat's kind of gone off in their own uh, their own space. Uh, Conical with Ubuntu OpenStack, uh, VMware and VIO, uh, Pivotal from a, from a Cloud Foundry perspective, and again, um, Morantis. Uh, and they work obviously closely with Red Hat. So again, optimizing the power of one, uh, you know, open, not not closed, no vendor lock-in, designed for convergence, right? You know, we're really looking at, you know, giving you a solid solution across the board, server, software, uh, storage, and networking. Again, proven experience. We're not, not, not just hardware. We've been doing it. Uh, HPIT uh, has been uh, working and developing our in-house apps where we're really, you know, using our stuff and again, helping customers move from a, from a CapEx to an OpEx model is uh, it's very important. So as we look at, you know, where customers are, you know, you know you, you, we talked about the, the products, uh, you know, this um, analogy, if it's logos that we know, right, those are a cl classic IT, right, those are the guys that are looking to scale up, right. You know, if I have an Exchange server or an Oracle server, those are big systems that pretty much will set them up and let them go. And then now this new cloud native, right, you've got, you know, new terms, Hadoop, Docker, MongoDB, scale out databases, Postgres. Those are things where it's, you know, net new. They're really designed to scale out, right? They're not going to be connected to anything else, right? You know, you just want to run it, kill it. It's going to spawn someplace else. Again, what we're looking at providing that centralized management layer that will support both classic IT and while we're bridging you over uh, to new, right? We don't make the, uh, the assumption that anyone's just going to cut and dry and start fresh uh, someplace else. They may, they may do it from a project-to-project -project perspective, but they're just not going to move over unless they're a brand new company. So again, keep in mind, and And again, uh, and that's all I have for right now. Uh, again, I, I get, thank you for your time, and I'll turn it back over to the team. Thank you, Derek. Appreciate that. Um, I just have a couple more um, items to talk to you about around the actual programs within Partner Ready. So those of you who are familiar with Partner One on the HPE side of the house, it's now called Partner Ready. And there are a, uh, several specializations within Partner Ready. 
and uh, Cloud Builder is one of those specializations. Um, can you advance the slide, there, uh, Tom? Sure can. Okay, there I am. There I am. Got it. Okay. Sorry. So the Cloud Builder uh, program is designed to transform partners um, going from individual products to selling solutions. The HP, um, HPE Cloud Builder program is the only specialization that actually rewards you for selling across the BUs and the business groups. So, for example, if we're going to be talking about the um, benefits of Cloud Builder, the Cloud Builder benefit is actually based on the full configuration. So if your configuration for a cloud opportunity, if you are a cloud builder, includes uh, servers, uh, storage, networking, software, your benefit off of that specialization will come off of that full configuration and not just the software. So that's how, why we say that the cloud builder specialization truly works across the full, um, all the BUs. Whoops, what happened? Um, so the Cloud Builder program, sorry, I'm going to get there. The Cloud Builder uh, requirements and benefits for FY16, we just changed the program. Um, there is no hardware requirement. It's mainly 200K in cloud software revenue. Um, a documented customer implementation, which does not mean a referenceable account. It just means that you have actually installed um, cloud, uh, cloud system in, within one of your customer um, environments. Um, Pan HP sales certs, cloud um, knowledge credits. There's also technical certs that, that are also included. Um, one of the other things that you get, you could actually strive or move towards a software platinum status if you are going to be a, a cloud builder specialist as well as uh, one of the following accreditations, whether it's CSA, OO, or SA. And, um, Derek went through those, that product set. So if you pull one of those and get the accreditations for one of those three software um, ATPs, and you also have Cloud Builder, um, a specialization, that helps you to become on the way for as a software, software platinum partner. Um, and the benefits is 5% of the solution. So when I told you that you get the benefit for Cloud Builder on servers, uh, storage, networking, and software that's fully encompassed within that particular configuration, that 5% comes off the total amount of that particular order that you've placed, that configuration. And there are additional benefits as well, depending if um, um, for software, if it's a new customer, if it's a new account, and some, uh, we up the base comp on the PLs for 8C, 8C which is eucalyptus and staccato, FT is OpenStack subscription, and FY is um, HPE software. So uh, those are the things that I wanted to talk to you about today. And um, I do not have anything else, and, and, but I do want to thank you. And if there's any questions, please let us know. I want to thank both you and Tech Data for give it, letting, giving us this opportunity to bring this message to you. So thank you. Tom? All okay. right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lynn and Derek. We appreciate your time. Um, at this point, I do not see any questions. I'm going to go ahead and take back over controls. Um, if anybody has any questions, we'll give them just a minute to go ahead and get them typed into the chat box there um, for us to ask over to Lynn and Derek. I don't see any questions or anyone typing. So at this point, I just want to say thank you again to everybody for taking the time to join. Uh, we really appreciate it. And thank you to Lynn and Derek. Thank you all. Have, have uh, happy holidays as well. Thank you very much, everybody. Take care. Thank you. Take care.